there, Vince here, and it's another trying to fix video. And in this video, we're going to be trying to fix up a gaming watch that was sold on eBay for £39. Now, I uh, have never done a gaming watch on this channel here. They're expensive. That's just, that's just the way it is. They're collectible. But this one here, the game, actually looks like it is quite a bit of fun. And it was sold as the down button not working and also grubby and in bad condition. So here we have it here. So I don't think it's going to be too challenging, but sometimes it's nice to do something which doesn't take three days to fix. So let's pop some batteries in. You can see there's definitely a lot of dirt around here. Uh, the seller also said that this outer bit here was missing. So can you see we have a nice little cover for this side? There should be one on this side as well. So it's the down button which is not working. Yeah, you can definitely see there's a fair bit of wear because you can just see just along here thumb marks on there so yeah I think it's uh, I think it's well used it takes LR44 batteries so I've got two of these here let's pop it in and just verify that is the fault looks really rusty around the screws as well I hope this is not water damaged but saying that if it's just a down button that's not working then uh, it can't be too serious Right, while I'm popping the batteries in, let's give a big shout out to the My Mate Vince Massive. They're the guys who are on the top level on Patreon. So uh, they really help out on videos like this. So this month is Saturnine Cinema, Operational 117, KitDigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, and Having Fun Repairs. So thank you if you support this channel. Massive thanks. Right, let's open it up and see. ah, here we go. We've got the screen here. Excellent. So that is working. Oh, <laughs> I went to do the D-pad here, but obviously we've got a, a right here, haven't we? Oh, and I've done it. Oh, God, that is so weird. I'm so used just out of uh, sort of muscle mem oh, out of muscle memory to be using this as the D-pad all the way round. It feels so alien. Anyway, look. Every time he does a sign here, it go, the screen goes the opposite way. So right now I need to go down and I can't go down. So excellent. Down is not working. So the eBay listing, everything on that is correct. So it either goes up, down, right or left. And then there's another game mode on it as well. So I think it looks... Well, we'll, we'll do the gameplay hopefully at the end because I can't go down now. So uh, it's no good when the screen's going up. But it is still playable when the screen's going down. Excellent. I think that this game will, I think this will have a little bit of life to it. How do you turn it off? Does it just close? No. Where's the off button? Okay, I'll have to check online for that. Let's just pop the batteries out. Let's get this thing apart and see how we can fix it. Well, so I'm actually going to use a flathead for these because they don't seem to get much grip on a crosshead. I'm hoping it's just the ends of the screws that are a bit corroded. So 1986, 34, 35 years ago. I'm thinking the contact's just going to need a clean, just like a, a remote control. But you never know, it might be something more than that. Here we go. Oh, so the hinge is on that. Okay, yeah. Right, so we have our little uh, piezo speaker there. We've got a chip there. MG61, it says there, and it also says MG61 there. 4.3 millimeter screw only. Again, these screws have the option for flathead or a crosshead, like a Phillips screw. Reminds me of the Casio watch I did. You know the one where I did the comparison with the fake? Now, yeah, there we go. Here it comes. Okay. That's like the polarizer at the back there, isn't it? And this is the polarizer for the front. Right, okay. So, down button is this one here. 
So it's this one here. Ah, you can already see it's been scratched up a bit. Can you see there? It looks like it's been a repair has been attempted on it because it's more scratched than the others. Right, okay. Uh, what is that going against? Oh, that just goes against here, these contacts here. Well, look, the screen's working, isn't it? So let's not get too involved with any of that. Yeah, so they're the zebra connectors that conduct it from here onto the actual LCD itself. So let's carefully put that down to one side. What else we got going on? That looks like that was in the wrong way. Look, that should be that way around, shouldn't it? To match up with the cutouts there. Yeah, this has definitely been apart before. Right, I am gonna take it all apart and give it a good clean. Let's see what's going on up here. just oxidized or whether this has had a bit of uh, liquid damage possibly not sure yeah so that foam there is just used to put pressure against the screen so the actual ribbon cable needs to be perfect on there for it to line up each one of those lines have to line up with the uh, screen exactly Well, now I'm confused because that's done on the wrong way as well. Maybe that's the way it's supposed to go because look at the dirt on that there. So it looks like they are supposed to be on the wrong way. You would think it would go that way lining up with that, wouldn't you? But I better keep it as it was because it was working. Right, okay, well that's it completely apart. So now I am going to I'm going to put this in the sink and wash that. Uh, what am I going to do here? I have to clean this with a wet wipe because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get involved with wetting that speaker. And I can't take it out there because it's all been plastic welded in. It's just been like melted over. Right, so what I'm going to do is let's give everything a good, good clean. Let's wash that and that. That's about it really. Yeah, I'm going to wash that and that in the sink and give everything a clean with a wet wipe. So let's do that now. And then even just the very fact of cleaning it might well fix the down. If not, we can... Uh, see, it might not be an issue with this itself. It might be an issue with this here where it's kind of gone shiny. You can see how the very edges of it are starting to break down. I'm going to leave this zebra connector in place because it's on quite strong. I haven't got replacement ones and uh, just in case when I peel it it was to cause any damage because after time they can really get stuck on very well. There's no need for me to take it off because I know the screen's working. looking on the edge here and it looks like it's been burnt which is a bit of a shame maybe the hinge was coming loose so somebody just uh, 
put a lighter or something on it to just burn it to try to melt the plastic to stop the hinge from coming out. see if a little bit of wet and dry sandpaper would get rid of this burning here. Not really, it's helped a little bit, but uh, yeah I don't think I'm going to do any more than that, otherwise what's going to happen is it's just going to become really dull in that area there. Right, let's get some IPA and let's clean up these button contacts. So that's isopropyl alcohol. Oh, there's the crystal. So for the, because uh, these have a little clock on them, don't they? And also maybe for the chip as well, possibly. Timing for the chip. Let's see if I can measure any continuity on these pads here. So that looks like it goes to this one. Yep. Uh, this one will end up going up to here. Yep. And this one and these two are linked here. Yep, yeah. and that goes all the way around to this side here. So between here and here. Yeah, so I think it's okay. I think it's more than likely it was probably one of these that were uh, faulty. So if you have a look here, you can see that it is bringing up a reading. Yeah, I think is I think it was just purely dirt. Yeah, and as well as that, these are starting to break down. So if you have a look at this one here, can you see it's broken there? But that that should stop it pressing going back up, not pressing down. And this one here, I think, is broken or about to break. There we go, it's broken there as well. I think that will be okay. They've still got spring in them when you press them down. They still spring back up. Right, so now I need to wash this in the sink. Right, let's uh, now put this jigsaw back together. So I got a nice bit of dirt out of that. Look at that one. So hopefully it should be better than it was. I'm still not 100% sure about this button though. So uh, we won't know until we put it back together. Well, I'll put the other two screws in later. Let's just see if we have any life. Excellent, screens are still working. Do you know, looking at it there, it doesn't look any cleaner than it did before. Let's see if the... Uh... Hold on. down still not working. Unbelievable. 
Yeah, look. Let's take it apart again and have a closer look at the down button contacts. Okay, so we're worried about this bottom one here. Let's zoom right the way in and see, because I don't believe, well, I'll tell you what, let's just, to make sure it's nothing to do with this, just in case I end up going crazy on it. Let's swap them over. And now we definitely know that those pads are okay. No, down's definitely not working. Okay, so we're going to zoom in and we're going to go from these bottom contacts here because we know the top side of it must be working because these two are working here. Let's go from this bottom one and see where it goes to and see if that makes any sense. Right, so these two are connected to here and this one's working, so that circuit must be all right. There, there, ah. So that must be connected via this thing here because otherwise it doesn't go anywhere. So let's get the multimeter on. Now let's see if that's connected to here. Yes, it is. Right, and then does that go all the way? Is it this black thing here? All the way to here? I'm saying that that side of it must be okay because this one's working. So if the track was broken here, this one wouldn't work either. So it must be something to do with this bottom one. So 100% we've got it between here and here. Goes along, goes along, goes along to this one here. And we've got it between here and here. Because we did that earlier. Yeah. So now what happens here? So this is connected, so these buttons work, so that's connected to here. Goes down to here. Is it through this where here? So these go into the chip, don't they? Yeah. kind of hard to see what's going on with all this carbon and then this kind of black shiny overlay. The thing that's confusing me is these black shiny things because look, we can definitely see that this goes to here. Yeah, goes down and this goes to here. But yeah, if I go between here and here, I'm not getting anything. I'm just going to see if I'm getting an ohm reading at all. Yes, I am. I am. But it is, yes, it was 967 ohms, 0.9 kilo ohms. Right, okay. So I'm just going to have to go by the, uh, by the ohms. So now let's see if this here is going all the way over to here. Yes, it is. 31 ohms. Right, now let's see if this is going to here. Yes, it is. 20 ohms. So that's fine. So we know it's okay to here. Right. So now let's go. We know this one's working. So let's go between here and looks like this one here. So we should have something between here and here, which we do. We've got 1000 ohms, but now hopefully we haven't got anything between here and here. No, well, we've got mega ohms, or mega ohms, yeah. Right, so that must mean that we've got a problem on this bit here. 
which I suppose after it's the plastic things, it's these buttons here that I've worn against it, you see. This thing here. This must be quite a common fault on Game & Watches. Well, I suppose the ones with the same button layout as these. So the pressure has been forced down on this by players, you know, pushing it too hard. And uh, it's worn onto this one here. And I suppose the same thing could happen here as well. In fact, it looks slightly worn there. Well, we should get a, be able to get a reading again with my uh, resistance. So if I go between here and here, we've got, well, let's see, that's 12K. That's quite high, isn't it? Here we go, 140 ohms. I think it's gone all along here. Yeah, now we've got, gone up to 12K. I think this whole area here has gone between here and here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape back here. So yeah, this is it. You can actually see where the brakes are. Let's zoom right in on that. Yeah, so here and here. I wonder whether, I wonder whether a pencil, scribbling in with a pencil, would that put some sort of carbon, some graphite or carbon back into it? You know, before I do anything, I think I might try a pencil because then I could cover it in solder mask. Right, I've got a good old HB pencil here. So let's uh, let's just see if it does anything. I know I am going to have to get the paint out silver paint out but I am just going to pop it back together just to see if it's uh, if there's any different life in it did you see that it worked hold on I haven't got the screen there screwed in properly watch down there but it's a little bit hard to press it's quite a hard game yeah but it's definitely working look oh See? Oh, it didn't work then. See? Well, right, let me get the... Uh... Oh, I don't know what... To... I suppose I should do the silver paint. I hope that doesn't change the resistance of it, though. Because, I mean, this is working right now, and maybe when it's together it might be more sensitive. It's because it's all loose at the moment. But realistically, it's just going to wear away, isn't it? That's. Uh, but if I was to cover it with, if I was to cover it with solder mask, then it wouldn't wear away. Oh, I'm undecided. I think I'll try. I'll try the silver paint. But the problem with that is the conductive paint. It might be uh, once it's on, it's a little bit final. Well, maybe I could IPA it off, possibly. I've enjoyed this one now. I love fault finding like that, where you trace the fault and then you find it. And it makes sense, doesn't it? It was where. I like it as well when something makes sense, you know why it's happened. Pure and simple, just those uh, those contacts there have worn through. Or well, these contacts here, I should say. Right, let's get some silver paint and let's paint it between this contact here and this contact here. So this is what I'm using. It's just a very cheap stuff. I should probably get some better stuff. This is just the cheap stuff that you get for one or two pounds straight from China. So uh, I find because it's quite thick, it doesn't really it doesn't really go on well. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit here, and I'm going to use my needle to just to to paint it onto the board. But wasn't that a nice little thing with the pencil? It's too gloopy, it's horrible stuff. Do you know, I'm just going to dip the needle in some IPA and see if that wets it down a bit. Stephen Shaw, you told me that, didn't you? 
to mix it with IPA, see if that works. So let's give it a go. Yeah, okay, well, I'm going to wet it on the actual mat with the IPA. Well, amazingly, that has kind of gone on exactly where I wanted it to go on. So what I'm going to do is get my heat gun and just gently heat that area up to uh, melt it down a bit. Okay, so I've just got this on the lowest setting, which is 100 degrees and uh, four out of eight. I'm just going to gently just go over here and take the heat off. Obviously, I don't want to melt uh, not anything else. You can see now, look at that. It's starting to spread nicely already, isn't it? My worry is that it might be a bit too thick. You know, the height of it might be too much. It might interfere with the button presses. Right, I'm going to let that cool and then do it again if needs be. While it's cooling, I'm just going to see what sort of reading we're getting now. Let's zoom out a bit on our meter. But this stuff needs to be dry before it starts conducting. We're at 220 ohms. 235. Excellent. Right, I'm going to uh, just uh, let that dry and then uh, heat it up again, let it dry. Then hopefully what we can do is put some solder mask on it, put the UV light on it, and then hopefully that will seal it. Uh, I don't know whether I'm going to have to sand it down a bit for the height. I'm thinking it will be okay because it's kind of on the rocker in the middle, so I don't think that's going to cause any problems. Excellent, that's all covered. Let's get the light on it and uh, come back to this in about 15 minutes or so. I've left that on there for a long time now, and as you can see, it's gone nice and hard. So let's do one final test with the multimeter and get this thing back together. So between here and here, perfect, 260 ohms, happy with that. So the conductive paint has dried, the solder mask has dried. I fixed it, right? Wrong. When I put it back together, this happens. I don't believe this, it's not working. It's only going left and right, it's not going up and down at all. Well, I'm going to take it apart again. Sure, that had fixed it. I wonder if it's to resistance or something. So let's see if we've got a short between. So this should be linked to here, which it is, but it shouldn't be linked to here. Is this linked to here? Yes, it is. Ah, this one's linked to here and it shouldn't be. Why is it linked to there? So one goes down this track here. Let's zoom in. I wonder whether the silver paint's gone across two, two of the uh, two tracks. So we got uh, this one's linked to here, yes? But when we press the top button, it joins up this track, this second one. The one that goes round here and when we hit the bottom button it joins up this track so these are two separate tracks they both go along here so it's these two here so we must have some sort of resistance between these two so let me just go across here and here and read out the resistance yeah so it's 564 ohms so that's not right I don't think so I wonder whether I wonder whether underneath this it went uh, I wonder can I separate them? Yeah, I didn't check to think between them. I only checked uh, I only checked to make sure that they were making a contact. So, this is going up here, so I need to scrape it. I wonder would I have done it. It 
Excellent. Right, I'm not getting any reading there now. I'll show you that in a minute. Let's just make sure we still got a reading between here and here. No, where is it between here and here? No. Oh, it's this one. Yeah, we're getting a read in there. So that is uh, that is a thousand ohms though, eleven hundred ohms. Now let's see if we got a read in here. Yeah, two hundred and seventy ohms. Have we got one between here and here? No, and no. So that looks like that scrape in there has uh, has sorted it. So I am going to uh, before I put solder mask on that again. I'm going to put it back together and make sure that it is definitely working. Right, it's working. Doesn't seem very responsive here though. Maybe I'm just asking too much of it. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna run with that. Okay. And apparently it turns itself off after I think it's five minutes. Right, I'm just gonna uh, take it apart again, put solder mask on, and then the next time you see this, it will be back together. And we'll finish off showing you a little bit of gameplay because there's two games on this, A and B. And apparently the enemy there is called uh, Grumpy and this is called Ziggy the Maze Man. The alarm works. There you go. So apparently it goes off for one minute and then stops itself. And if you're playing a game, all that happens is the bell flashes like that with no sound. Well, let's do a bit of gameplay now. Okay, so I'm going to try and do a bit of gameplay just with my fingers like this so you can see it. So game A is where you just have to dodge the maze and Grumpy up here will push the maze going in different directions. And then game B, you have to actually rescue uh, little animal type things in the corner here, maze bugs or something. So let me show you game A to begin with. And it's completely responsive now. So uh, maybe it just needed seating properly. When it makes those noises, that's when it moves around the place. So you get the idea of, of uh, this one here. And obviously you can get trapped. And I suppose the quicker it goes, the more chance you've got of getting trapped. Especially if you weren't in the middle. So when you're in the middle, you've got time to react. But if you were on the edge and suddenly he changed direction, like there, you see, I would have died there. So you can see it's a clever, clever little game. Right, let's do game B. So you have to re oh, die. You have to rescue them from the corners, and he's still going to change change it around the place. Right, that's one rescued, two rescued, three rescued, four rescued. Excellent. And if you don't do it within a certain amount of time, the first one comes back again. Obviously, it's going to get a lot harder as it uh, goes along. So that is it. I thoroughly enjoyed this one. It's the first time I've worked on a Game & Watch. And not just working on it, I think the item itself, I can see why they're collectible. It's the sort of thing I would like to collect. Uh, obviously, not every single game is going to be good. But the whole thing about them just looks nice. You need to remember the age of this one here. And it still looks well obviously this has been well used but it still works fine and it just looks nice especially that color scheme on this particular model you've got to admit it does look good so uh, yeah i can fully see why people collect these i would definitely be up for getting a, another one i might keep my eye out for them i i like the fact that that was to me an interesting fault because it wasn't just cleaning the buttons it was an actual fault with the trace and then having to kind of pinpoint it and then even after the repair the fact it didn't move up and down it did the same thing because it was joined there so i was checking for continuity i didn't think to check for a short between the tracks it was also interesting to see the way they did it so a printed circuit board and then it 
was overlaid on top of it. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's something I don't think I've seen that before, but it's probably very, very common. So that is it for this video. Thanks so much for watching it. If you liked it, think about giving it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, think about subscribing. Big thanks to everybody that leaves comments, gives thumbs up, and also all the Patreons as well that support these trying to fix videos. Look after yourselves, everyone. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye now. Thank you.